Unit 3, Lesson 3, Popular Culture and the Birth of Icons. Our objective is that students will be able to identify the extremes of 1920s religions, political ideologies, social life, and economic institutions. Our essential question, why were the 1920s filled with political, social, and economic extremes? Unit 3, Lesson 3, Vocabulary. The culture clash of the 1920s continued with traditionalists like Billy Sunday and modernists like the average flapper girl having very different views surrounding immigration, equality, prohibition, evolution, consumerism, Anglo-Saxon superiority, sexuality, America's role in the world, and melanism or laissez-faire economic policies. Why exactly did America reject traditionalism during the 1920s? This backlash to fundamentalism was a movement against the closing of American society. With the formation of the American Civil Liberties Union in 1920, and with the aid of Supreme Court Justice Felix Frankfurter, who sought to protect the Bill of Rights, including, but not limited to, cultural pluralism or multiculturalism, made famous by Horace Kellen and America as a Protective Canopy, and Randolph Bourne, citing the Cosmopolitan Interchange. This backlash to fundamentalism was fueled by the influx or growing number of immigrants into America and the immigrant cultures assimilating into the American way of life. The decadent 20s were supposed to be about America's present need not being heroics but needing to heal and not nostrums but normalcy and not revolution but restoration according to President Warren G. Harding who believed firmly in isolationism the simple small town of life and the end of progressivism and no extremism. But extremism and modernism could not be denied. It was an embracing of the future, of technology and of living life. To be hip was a term coined during the 1920s, made famous and also known as the lost generation of Americans. For new technology like the radio, invented by Marconi in 1901 and sent the first radio message across the Atlantic Ocean, radio would go on to revolutionize American society with daily radio broadcasts drawing listeners in by the millions to tune into their favorite programs. Other new technologies included the cinema, where movies were another form of mass communication that swept the nation in the early 1900s and had a deep impact on the shape of American culture for the next 100 plus years. The growth of mass culture with the innovations in entertainment. On the radio, broadcasting took over the airways. This connected America via mass culture, mass marketing, sports, news, the symphonies. Americans could now be at a ball game in Yankee Stadium from their home in Brooklyn or listen to a news broadcast from the Great Plains about events that are taking place across the nation live. Movies and amongst the first movies were revolutionary. The Great Train Robbery and Birth of a Nation, the KKK propaganda film that was shown in the White House in 1915. And the first talkie or talking movie with sound called The Jazz Singer. Movie houses were called Nickelodeons because admission was only a nickel. Movies were also used as propaganda. Automobiles 
changed the way the world worked and ushered in modernism with such an advent of technolo technological change. Henry Ford changed the way people lived and the way businesses manufactured goods with the assembly line manufacturing and mass production of a single product. Pilots also were seen as international and national heroes. Pilots like Charles Lindbergh, who in 1927 flew across the Atlantic Ocean in his plane, the Spirit of St. Louis. And a little over a year after Charles Lindbergh's flight, Amelia Earhart became the first woman to fly across the Atlantic, returning to the United States a hero to many. In 1937, she was most of the way through a record-breaking flight around the world when she disappeared somewhere over the Pacific Ocean. Other changes of the modernist times during the Jazz Age of the Roaring Twenties was a youth cultural movement which challenged old norms. Major factors in that movement were Margaret Sanger, who founded Planned Parenthood, and birth control, and Sigmund Freud, who believed in expressing one's self and expressing sexuality as healthy. This aided with the urban migration of African Americans out of the reconstructed South and jazz movement in Harlem and the Harlem Renaissance, with their up tempo, up -tempo music allowed individuals of color and women to gain greater freedoms throughout society. The 1920s saw a great change in the attitudes of the youth. This was a jazz age attitude where children, young adults, and adults lived for today and didn't worry too much about tomorrow. And authors like F. Scott Fitzgerald and his prize work, The Great Gatsby, became the voice of the 20s for a lost generation, the disillusioned generation created by the horror and aftermath of World War I. When America needed a new voice and America needed new heroes, heroes emerged because of the prevalence of the radio and the cinema and the growing mass media market in America. It was easier than ever before to identify yourself with an icon of the times. This was an era where culture questioned society. There was a resentment of the ideals that had led to World War I, that had led to such conflict and such death on a massive scale. Children not only resented their parents, they resented everything about their parents' generation, the policies, the politics that led to World War I. And thus began the era that America searched for heroes, fueled by tabloid and gossip columns in newspapers and magazines. There was no shortage of heroes and controversies surrounding those heroes, like Charles Lindbergh, Jack Dempsey, in Babe Ruth. And for the first time in history, the radio helped inflame the public passion for sports, and millions of Americans tuned in to broadcasts of ball games and prize fights featuring their favorite athletes. Athletes like Helen Willis, Red Grange, Bobby Jones, and Babe Ruth. 